Hello friends, this video on P-Block Elements Part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. There are various compounds of boron. One is the borax, one is the orthoboric acid, third is diboric and the fourth is boron trihalide. So we'll discuss all these compounds now. Of the, boron. the first is the borax. The borax looks something like this. It is a very important compound of boron and its formula is Na2B4O7-10H2O. Or if you want, you can write this fashion also, both are same actually, Na2B4O5OH4, 8H2O. If you see the structure of boron, if you see, this is actually a cation with positive 2 charge. If you see there, sorry, negative 2 charge, an ion, this is minus 2 charge, right? This is minus 2 charge. And then here you add sodium, 2 ions of sodium. And then you have 8 water molecules. And then here, here you have 8 water molecules, 8 water molecules. This is the structure of uh, uh, borax. If you see the way it is linked is, they have four borons, one, two, three, four borons. And all these are linked with oxygen in this fashion. And there's oxygen here also, right? And these all these borons now are, are linked with OH molecules, right? And now if you see, these guys have two negative charge, correct? So these borons, if you see, these are sp2 hybridized and these are sp3 hybridized 1 2 3 4 bond sp3 hybridized 1 2 3 bond sp3 hybridized and these two borons has uh, which are sp3 hybridized has negative charge so overall it has minus 2 negative charge it's a, a 9 and this is a sodium cation and a plus and it has if you see now this has uh, extra 8 molecules of water the total if you add if you see right one how many hydrogen molecules 1 2 3 4 4 hydrogen molecules and that means two water molecules, right? Because two water molecules will have four hydrogen molecules, two to four. In total it has 10 water molecules, but if you want, write a concrete structure, actual structure, this is like this, because two sodium ion I have, then I have this, uh, this is plus two, this is minus two, this is uh, ionic actually, this is uh, cation, and this whole thing is anion with the minus two charge, and then I have eight molecules of water. But it is a little complex to write in this fashion, so we write Na2B4O7.10H2. But this is the actual formula for the borax. And this is the shape if you see, just three dimensional. If you see, these are my borons. The pink ones are my borons. And let me write, uh, these are my oxygens. The red ones are the oxygens. And the white ones are my hydrogen. This is the structure of, three dimensional structure of borax. So as we have told, the boron undergoes sp2 and sp3 hybridization as I told. These are sp3 hybridized and these are, the other ones are sp2 hybridized. Right, two sp2 and two sp3 hybridized. Let's understand, let's understand something more on borax. So the first thing you can see, this is a crystalline, white crystalline solid as you can see here itself. The second property is it is dissolved in water. So it does not dissolve in cold water, but in hot water it dissolves. In cold water it does not dissolve, but in hot water it dissolves form alkaline solution. This is the reaction we have. This is my borax. It reacts with water, cold water, hot water. It gives sodium hydroxide and boric acid. And if you see, this is a strong base. And I told this boric acid is a weak acid. So it's a strong S, uh, weak acid and strong base. So it's a basic solution or alkaline solution. Correct. On heating, this borax, it loses water molecules first and then swells up. And on further heating, it turns into a transparent liquid. And with, when this liquid solidifies with some other metals, it gives a color to the glass. It, it comes as a glass shape actually. When it solidifies, it becomes a glass shape. And when this glass, actually when you heat this glass with some metals, it gives different colors. Correct, and this is used to determine metals actually. For example, manganese will give you brown color, right here. Or right here, somewhere. This, this is brown, this manganese will give you brown color, right? Chromium will give you a green color, right? Copper will also give you a green color. Nickel will give you a brown color. Cobalt will give you a blue color. So we will talk about these. So different metals 
they give different colors in the beat test. What we do in the beat test, we take this platinum wire because it's an unreactive, right? And then we take some borax and we heat this. When you heat this, this water molecule goes off, right? And it becomes Na2B4O7, right? When you further heat this, it, it solidifies into a glass-like shape, this way. And this guy, when it reacts with the various metals, sorry, this guy, B203. This guy, when it reacts in the I mean, it gives different colors in the oxidizing and reducing flame. So this guy, if you see this part is the oxidizing flame, if you see, and this lower part is the reducing flame. So this color I wrote is the oxidizing flame actually. So what happens is we have got B203 and this is my transparent bead. Actually, the whole thing is called transparent bead, but I'll concern more about this part now. This is my transparent bead now, right? Now, when I mix this with uh, some element and when I heat this, it gives different color. We'll see some examples. Just let me finish this part now. So, if you see, right, these uh, transition metals, most of the transition metals actually, uh, not all the metals, but the transition metals, they have special colors. For example, I told cobalt gives blue, chromium, and copper gives green, and this is, uh, magnesium and nickel gives brown in the oxidizing flames. These are the oxidizing flames. It gives uh, these colors. Right? And these are used to identify them in the lab and this test is called borax bead test. This is a platinum wire and this you first add this borax, you heat this, water is gone and again you further heat, you get this bead, this is called bead actually. And then with this bead, with this bead you add some uh, metals which you want to test, you want to identify the metals and then again heat in the oxidizing flame you get different colors and with that you can find. For example, one example is given is uh, when this, this borax bead which we have got, you add some uh, cobalt in this, in this blue, right? And then when you heat this in the oxidizing flame, you will get what? Cobalt gives what? Blue color. So the reaction will be like this for cobalt. I have this one, but I have this bead. When you heat this, you get CO, BO2, BO2, right? This is cobalt metaborate and this is blue in color. This I am talking about in oxidizing flame. For example, nickel, if you see NiO, you had this B2O3, you get NiBO2O2. That is nickel metaborate, and this is brown in color. And this is blue in color. Similarly, for manganese, a lighter reaction here. For manganese, if we heat the same thing with B, that is B2O3, you get Mn, BO2, whole 2. Not, uh, not able to write clearly, but it's Mn, BO2, whole 2. And this is manganese metaborate, this is brown Correct. Similarly, chromium will give chromium metaborate, Cr, BO2, O3. And, uh, and copper will give copper metaborate. And these guys have different color. And this will give it the oxidizing flame. Correct. Similar in the reducing flame, it will give a different color. For example, copper in the reducing flame will give a bottle green color. Correct. So with this, uh, I mean the, the logic here is not to tell you the colors and all. You should not understand the color or remember the color. The logic here is that the borax gives different colors for different transition metals in the bead test, right? And, and this differs in the oxidizing and reducing flame. So if you see this part is the oxidizing flame and this part is the reducing flame for flame. So if you heat somewhere here, this is the reducing flame. This is if you heat somewhere here, it's the oxidizing flame. So with this, we are able to identify different metals. This is the use of borax here because the borax gives a borax bead and these beads uh, give different colors, different transition metals and this helps you identify different metals. And please note the platinum wire is used here. because this is little unreactive. So let's talk about the uses of borax. The first is for the soldering of metals. It is used, you must have seen the electronic circuits. They are soldered and they are soldered using borax. For the glass, Paris glass, because they are heat resistant, borax is used. For the borax V test we did just discuss, it is used. It is also used widely in candle industry. It is used in the laundry. In laundry it is used borax. It is also used to create earthen pots. These are some of the use of borax. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to 
watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.